My first musical training it was as a choir boy. As some people might think it's a bit hard to believe now, but I was quite shy as a, as a little boy. And so I had to sort of, I sort of kept very much in the, in the background, in the, in, the, in the shadows, until one day I was, I was rumbled and the choir master gave me the, my first solo. And I remember it, actually, it was, a, it was just one verse of a hymn. It was, let all mortal flesh keep silence. It's English hymnal, number 318, <laughs> and it was too low for me. <laughs> Then through the school choir, the, the, the brilliant music teacher who fed me small books of songs and said, oh, you might want to have a look at these, but without any pressure. And, um, and I liked it. It sounds like quite a simple story, but there's, there's no sort of, I sang at the knee of my grandmother and then I become star. I mean, it, wasn't, it really wasn't like that. I think as far as singing was concerned, I liked the sensation of it. it. It felt good. Taking a deep breath and making a musical sound, I found fantastically exciting without really realizing why. My voice, when I started, was very light, tenor, very high, and it coincided with the time in, in the world of professional music when uh, authentic instruments became very popular. And so all the Baroque composers, Purcell, Bach, Handel, for example, were being looked at anew. And so they needed singers with the sort of voices they thought might uh, go well, and, and that I fitted the bill. So my first steps uh, onto the solo track, if you like, were, were through authentic and um, ancient instrument recordings and concerts. And will they take a glass of wine with me? One of the projects that I've been involved with recently, which has taken me uh, abroad several times now, is a, uh, a new staging of a Janáček opera from the House of the Dead. Two very, very famous and important creative beings, uh, Pierre Boulez, the conductor, and Patrice Chéreau, the, well, now best known as a filmmaker, but uh, also a very, very talented actor in his own right, then became a director in, in theatre and, and some opera and, and now film. They decided to come together to have a look at this, this piece. And because they're both so uh, enormously respected and still enormously um, alive creatively, it was immediately, before they even started to work on it, sort of big news in the, in the arts world. And they had previously collaborated at Bayreuth, the Wagner Festival, on um, the complete ring cycle back in the 70s. So we were nearly 30 years later. They decided to collaborate on The House of the Dead. And I was lucky enough to be cast as one of the main characters, Paul Skuratov. It's a deranged madman. Fantastically interesting character to play. I mean, as a lyric tenor, uh, you get to play normally princes, kings, uh, love interests, or an emperor with a problem, that sort of thing. And so to have this rich and varied character, the singing acting part, was really, uh, really stimulating. And we ended up with a production that was so theatrical that the marriage of the music and what was happening on the stage was so tight that people who saw it came out feeling they, they weren't sure if they'd seen a play or an opera. And that is just about as perfect as you can get uh, if, you're, if you call yourself a singing actor, and I suppose I do. I think the ideal performer in an opera is, is a singer stroke actor who does what it says on the tin. If you're in a an opera which is principally about singing, then you have to be the, a superlative singer. If you're in an opera which is principally about a music drama, where you're trying to marry uh, the, the, the music with the theatrical side so that you can no longer see the join, then you need someone, a, a different animal. And if you put either in the other camp, if you like, the, it doesn't often work very well. Right now, you know, in the early 21st century, the, 
we have an embarrassment of riches of talent because we've got so many theatrical directors who are also interested in working in, in opera that uh, you've got a vast range of, of talent and intelligence. Conductors as well. We've got wonderful eminence grise who bring huge experience and calm to their music making. And we've got wonderful sort of wunderkind, young, uh, exciting conductors who stimulate your imagination anew. And with me at my age, sort of, let's just call it somewhere in the middle, <laughs> age-wise, you're, you're in this fantastic, well, I feel, fantastic position to look both ways and drink from both sides of, of that. I'm not too old and tired to be, uh, feel hassled by a, a young and new imagination. But at the same time, I probably now more than when I was younger, calm enough to try to appreciate something a bit more subtle that will come from a more experienced musician than I am. And that, 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 that's great.